There we go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host over here on the end, uh, Krista Burns here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. Actually, we have people logged in from all over the country um, for today's. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always log in, um, go into our website, and see all of our archive recordings. We're on our fourth year now of Encompass Live. So there's a lot of stuff out there <laughs> that you can watch. Um, and we do all sorts of things, presentations, book reviews, Q&A sessions, whatever we can think of that might be of interest to um, librarians. Um, today we have a new thing, um, our, what we're calling our Tech Rodeo Roundup. Uh, last week, just last week, the library, the Nebraska Library Commission hosted some, um, and we'll get more explanation about this from everyone else here, some um, library school scholarship students and librarians at an event called our Tech Rodeo. You can see the website right there um, where they um, learned how to use a lot of cool technology. And um, we're going to talk about that, talk about the event, how it happened, and we've got some attendees that were there who are going to talk about their experiences at it. And... Um, Let's see how that all goes. See how that all is. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves since we've got a large group here, so we'll just do it as they all talk and everything. So I'm going to first hand over to Catherine Brackmeyer, who is in charge of our scholarship program. Yes, yes. So I'll pass on things to you, however you guys want to do it. And, uh, all right. Good morning. I'm Catherine Brockmeyer here at the Nebraska Library Commission. I am the grant coordinator for the IMLS 21st Century librarian program and with the funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services we have been able to provide scholarships to Nebraskans who are pursuing a degree endorsement or certificate in library science who plan to work in a Nebraska library. In addition to that we offer a stipend amount which provides them the opportunity to purchase a laptop, attend a conference, and join an association. The grant also provides funding to public libraries to hire interns, and this is uh, one of our ways to recruit to the profession and to recruit to library science education. Of course, um, I want to go back and talk a little bit about the library science education. It is for individuals pursuing their master's in library and information services uh, or science, um, whether they're interested in working in a public library, academic library, um, any kind of library that you can think of, and then also for those who are pursuing a degree in education, a master's degree or an undergraduate degree, and then looking for an endorsement in um, whatever the popular phrase of the day is. Uh, sometimes it's media, uh, school media, and um, there are other, there are technology, uh, there are various names yeah. for these endorsements. And um, so this is also at the associate's level, um, the undergraduate level, and the master's level. And I just want to set the stage a little bit for the Tech Rodeo. One of the other aspects of this scholarship, we called it a value-added scholarship. We wanted to provide opportunities for our scholarship students to beef up their 21st century skills because we want them to be able to transfer those to their patrons, to their customers, to their students, um, as that is the end goal is for um, our library users to increase their 21st century skills. And so we require that they participate in three trainings and report on those. Um, and those, a lot of them are recorded one-hour webinars, for example, or if they're attending some conference or training, they can use that. The other part was that we wanted to con conduct a two-day seminar in improving our um, and introducing various technology aspects, which Michael and Laura will talk about, and also uh, beef up various 21st century skills so that when the librarians and the students are prepared, when it's time to work with the public or their students, they're able to um, help them out as well. And so I wanted just to introduce you to the Now Hiring at Your Library page. This is where you can in find information about jobs and careers that are available, uh, learning opportunities in, in terms of formal education available, especially here in Nebraska. Uh, here's the scholarship section, internship section, and uh, several other sections. Um, and here in the scholarship section is where we talk about um, 
that um, enhanced learning opportunities such as the 21st Century Skills Seminar, which became the Tech Rodeo webinars, face-to-face -face training, and online social networking. And so I just wanted to introduce you a little bit to the online social networking um, that we provided, that we have provided, and it is through Nebraska Librarians Learning Together um, here on Facebook. And it's facebook.com slash Nebraska Librarians. And even if you're not um, from Nebraska, it's been a great way. Uh, we post updates, technology-related updates, hot topics that are going on in library world um, for our librarians and students. One aspect that I am hoping will come of this is that library students will find uh, perhaps a librarian who has posted that they may want to connect with at a later date and uh, perhaps be mentored. So uh, great updates, and um, here are the photos from the Tech Rodeo. Lots of great photos here from the Tech Rodeo, and uh, we will refer back to that as we introduce a couple of the uh, individuals who are speaking with us today. And I think that's my spiel. The next scholarship application deadline is November 1st. It is available right now at the associates and, and bachelor's levels. Sad to say, our funding from the grant at the master's level did run out. So popular, unbelievably popular. We have a lot of wonderful Nebraskans who are pursuing an education in library science at the master's level, and the money that was allotted to us through our grant has run out. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good kind of running out of money. Yes. <laughs> yes, but joining this Facebook community and getting involved with that is a great way to connect with other students and librarians. Mm -hmm. And um, always finding out about various trainings that are available through continuing education and that sort of thing yeah. that's going on at the commission. Everyone's always welcome to jump on board. That's that. Now, really, that's my spiel. <laughs> I'm really, really right. done. And Laura and Michael. Hi, I'm Laura Johnson, um, the uh, Continuing Education Coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, wh when we wrote the idea into the grant, <laughs> you know how it is, you do these things and then later you think, oh, um, golly, guess we're going to have to plan that. Um, we had, when we started planning, we had a huge list of things we wanted to cover. We wanted to cover technology, this thing and that thing and a new program and well, it obviously uh, we couldn't cover it all. But we did choose some that we thought um, were important that would work well together and um, we were really interested in helping people with the technology but with it using the technology to improve again the 21st century skills. Um, you can kind of think about them as the four C's, which are collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking. Uh, these are the things that we feel that, well, and, and the Institute of Museum and Library Services feels are important for librarians and for um, our citizens moving forward in the 21st century. So uh, with that in mind, we tried to put together something that would be interesting, that would be fun. Uh, that would convey these skills. Um, so we, we tried to work on several levels. We tried to work with technology, but also with subjects we thought people would be interested in, include some basic, some basics that we weren't sure people got. And one of the big things was to include enough information that they really became a basis for learning because we do believe in continuing education and the idea that librarianship, I suppose every place is, but librarianship is especially um, involved in continuous learning. You're never going to stop learning. You're never going to stop moving on to new things. And so we thought it's important then to have a good basis for that learning. So we tried to put this together. Then the idea was, well, where where should we do this? How should we do it? Um, we came to Doan College kind of thinking, well, you know, maybe that would be a good place. And we went there and we were so pleased with it. We thought it was charming and they were so nice and it, it looked like it would be ideal for our purposes. So we did and we had a great time. The weather even cooperated. <laughs> the one whole day we were there, the weather wasn't even quite as hot as it had been. So we have just been really pleased with how it worked out, and I hope everybody else was too.
and I'm going to pass this on now. Okay. Uh, right in the middle, I just want to say that the Tech Rodeo was all expenses paid for our scholarship students, whether they were current or former. Even if they had graduated and received their degree or their funding had run out, um, that was also written into the budget for the grant. Was that we did, you know, that we, this was all expenses paid for them. So. Um, there you go. Uh, good. So this is Michael Sowers. I'm the Technology Innovation Librarian here, and so. One of the things I had to do with Laura was figure out, okay, exactly how are we going to teach these five C's? How are we going to pull it all together? So what I want to talk about is a little bit about uh, what the actual plan was and, and what we had the attendees do. Um, so there's a couple pages on our website you might be interested in taking a look at. The first one is the resources page. And um, we had them doing some projects. So we did a couple of things. One we picked, uh, we're going to have eight teams, so we picked eight topics talk about what some of those topics were in a moment, and sent each of the teams of uh, four to five attendees uh, a packet of information about their topic. And we said, start thinking about this topic, um, so that way when you're on site, you don't have to be thinking as much about the topic. You can do a little planning ahead. And then we, what we had each team come up with was a two to three minute oral presentation, which falls under communication, not really technology oriented, but the idea was is your team needs to come up with a project in your topic and you're going to have to ask somebody some, for some money to pay for your project. So we needed kind of a two to three minute oral presentation to a funding agency. Those were uh, not recorded. Those, those, those are, we're not saved for posterity. Yeah, oral um, presentation is a really useful skill. Yes, yes, because oral presentation definitely. We had Pat Leach, the director of Lincoln City Libraries, come and give a talk about giving uh, about public speaking, and, and that was wonderful. Yeah. And uh, then um, each team had to create a screencast of three to five minutes, which was designed to be a little more instructional about uh, their project, uh, how you would uh, do that or an example of that. So, for example, one of the teams was uh, working on an oral history project, so they did a little bit of oral history. They recorded each other telling stories about how they became librarians. Um, and then the third thing they had to do was come up with a three to five minute promotional video as to um, what, uh, you know, if you're going to then tell the public about your program. And um, one of those C's was creativity, and you were saying earlier, we had a lot of creativity. We're going we're gonna to show you one of those videos in a moment, and it was picked at random. It's just the first one alphabetically, so we're not saying anyone was any better than anybody else's. Um, the software and the hardware that was used, uh, we used Screencast-O-Matic, which is a free online and downloadable piece of software that you can do to do uh, screen recording. Uh, for editing, most of us used Windows Live Movie Maker, um, if for no other reason than it's free. And we're a Windows shop here at the Commission, so we didn't have a lot of Macs uh, uh, available to us. But for the uh, people who did bring Macs, uh, they were able to use uh, iMovie if they wanted to do that instead. Um, then we also had a bunch of flip cams available, uh, one for each team, so that's how they were actually doing the, the actual video recording. Uh, and then some folks uh, used some additional resources we talked about for, for uh, music sourcing, things like that. And then we did also talk kind of at the end about some additional software if people really got into the video creation that they might want to use in advance. So we've linked to all that uh, there if you wanted to do a similar project with this. Um, We'll show the example project in just a moment, but one of the other things we did was there was a lot of basic technology skills we wanted to cover in the session. So there was a series of what we called Tech Blast, which were 30-minute presentations on uh, five different topics, networking or networks, um, computer hardware. Um, I posted computer hardware twice. There we go. Okay, I'll have to fix that. Um, troubleshooting. And the other one was security. There's so there should be a security post. I'll get that fixed later this afternoon. Um, and and then yes, we also had one last tech blast, which was a live demo of the uh, Tech Atlas inventory tool and um, uh, event tracker. Uh, there's no actual presentation for that. We showed that live. So these presentations are there. Um, they were meant to be 30 minutes. So if you think we're covering you know everything you need to know about computer networks in 30 minutes. Uh, Dream on. Uh, it, it is the basics, but even even the folks in our evaluations who said I knew a lot about it, everybody got something out of each one. So that that was really kind of the, the coverage there. 
So the projects is what the teams came up with in the end. Uh, each team, we have their uh, group photo up there so you can see who was involved. Uh, and then we have, um, excuse me, my scroll isn't working very well there. Uh, their screencast is available uh, as a video and then their actual video that they created as the promotion. Um, I'm going to show this one video and um, then I'm going to kind of give you my reaction to, to, to the whole thing before we, we talk to the attendees. Uh, so you're going to have to, excuse me, I'm going to have to move the uh, microphone a little bit here. We're going to hope this all works really, really well. So let's go ahead. This was team uh, civic engagements. Okay. So and we, we should mm -hmm. say that these were um, learning experiences. These were people who had never done this before. Yes. And they had a limited amount of time to do it. Yep. So we thought the results were absolutely fantastic. Yes. And and they are not rep these are not real life projects and they are not representing their libraries or speaking on behalf of their libraries. Yeah. So <laughs> please keep that in mind too uh, uh, as you watch these. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on this one and let's take a look. It's about four and a half minutes, I believe. Hi, we're the Civic Engagement Team. I'm Sarah. I'm Dorothy. I'm Sarah. I'm Nancy. And I'm Dana. And today we're going to show you how to use your public library to access your community. Oh, Sarah, look at these books we could read. How would we read a book? No. Now we are going to hold uh, through the credits here on this one because um, they, they did a blooper reel. Oh, 
Uh, <laughs> um, yes. Um, I've got. I've got to say, I, I'm. I'm. People were joking that after we we demoed all the or we showed all these to the group at on um, Saturday morning that uh, I was speechless, and I was, and I still kind of am. I, I, you plan something like this, you give people about 36 hours to work in teams that, that maybe they haven't met before, and some equipment they've never used, and software they've never used, and said, here, go create something. And everybody did, and everybody pulled it off amazingly well, and some people were fearless in their videos. Um, I, I, we encourage you to watch, you know, all eight of them. They're all just, you know, 45 minutes apiece. Um, but I... It sounded like you said 45. Four to five oh, minutes yeah. apiece. Sorry. Between four to five minutes. Um, in fact, one team was like, ours is longer. Can we keep it longer? And we're like, well, if you could cut it down, you know, that would be great. But I, they, they were joking. They're, they're going to create the director's cut, you know, and, and put, put the missing footage back in. I don't know if they'll really do that. Um, but I, like I said, I was so impressed by, by all the participants and what they created. And, you know, f you know, trains in the background. Okay. But, you know, they had two and a half hours to, to come up with a script and go film something. So it, it's, it's uh, I'm I'm still impressed and and still recovering from the event. Uh, so um, that's that's uh, my spiel. So. Okay. Type on the screen. There we go. Yeah, there we go. We're sound back. We're going. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. Type yes if you can hear us. Type Y yeah, in the chat box. Sounds come through here. Excellent. Yeah. Michael, and, um, for, Michael for, being close the the, for being the technology yeah. innovation and librarian, he unplugged our microphone. <laughs> but he knew how to plug it back in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're going to have some of the attendees who are at this speak. And I, we didn't tell them this, but um, just out of a way to do it, we're going to go alphabetical by last name, which means that Jessica Chamberlain, who's on the line with us, will be our first person to... Uh, talk about her experience. Surprise! Um, <laughs> Jessica, you should be un you're unmuted now. All right. And you can do your introduce yourself and everything and how you got involved in it and whatever. Okay. Um, I'm Jessica Chamberlain. I'm the director of the Northeast Library System and um, got an invitation from Laura, I believe, to attend this uh, tech rodeo and all the other system administrators were invited to participate as well and um, so, you know, this was a brand new thing and we didn't really know what to think about it or really what to expect uh, when we got there. But it was really, the atmosphere that they created was really a lot of fun. It was very lighthearted and um, the tech blasts were very informational, but I'm glad they were only 30 minutes long because after that my brain was full. <laughs> but, um, but I think one of the, I just wanted to share probably one of the best things that I learned. And, and all of it, I think, was a valuable experience. And watching everyone's videos was the funniest and best part of the whole thing, I think. Um, but what I really took away from it was something that Michael said. And it's one of those just aha moments for me. Um, and he was talking in one of his tech blasts about, you don't have to be a techie to troubleshoot computer problems. You know, as a reference librarian, you answer questions every day that you don't know anything about. And I thought, well, duh, yeah, we do. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's our job is not to say, oh, yes, I know everything about that, and now let me give you my knowledge. That our job is to say, gosh, I don't know the answer to that. Let me help you find a way to fix it. Let me help you find the answer to that. And I think for a lot of us, there's just this block with technology or computers that when we come across a problem that we feel like, oh, I can't do that. But really this is no different than someone coming to you with a medical question or a legal question that you don't know anything about, but you go and you help them find the answer. So for me, I think that was my biggest, oh, I'm going to remember that forever. <laughs> So I don't I don't want to steal. I'm not sure how um, how much everyone else wanted to say. I don't want to say since I'm the first one. I don't want to give away all the good stuff. 
that that's great, Jessica. Thank you very much. I'll um, meet you again. Now, if anyone has any questions or anything you want to ask of Jessica or any of the uh, speakers, feel free to type them in and we'll pass them on. Um, but just to do this one at a time, I'll mute Jessica. And actually, next person alphabetically would be um, Angie, who's right here in the room with us. Um, you can introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, let's get the microphone down. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm Angie Krejci, and I am a lucky recipient of one of the scholarships for undergrad students. Um, this is a different career that I'm going into. I currently attend UNO, getting a K through sixth grade endorsement and then library endorsement as well in that process. So this was a great opportunity for me to learn. I'm a paraprofessional with Louisville Public Schools in the middle school library. So I walked away with a lot of things that I can use right away with my students as far as some of the technology that they use that I hope when they come in they feel like they can ask and I, I can help them. I've never made a movie before in anything and I've always wanted to and that was probably the most um, fun part of the whole project. I'm also on the library board at our local public library that has um, needed and been growing and changing for quite some time. We serve 1,500 um, townspeople and are working to get more patrons in. But the tech blast, I think probably, while I have a very strong technical background, I didn't, I walked away from there with a lot of things that I felt that I could do right away for our library as well and things that we needed to look at and encouraging. We've always sort of had this mantra, well, we don't have a technical expert. And that, too, was a big piece that I took away that, um, you know, the people on our board, the volunteers that we have come in, it's uh, the problem-solving techniques were really good. So I hope to share. Um, the project itself, we had under eight hours to do. So it was a lot of work, but it was a wonderful way to get to know some people um, very well, as if you watch some of the videos, uh, <laughs> some of the things that they did. Um, they had a good time with it. And the, what I like the best about the project, that it wasn't about the content. So often we get ourselves wrapped up in the content, and this was about the task of doing, the getting up and presenting, like in our team, um, one of the team members, she doesn't get a chance very often to get up and talk in front of people. And this gave her a venue in front of peers where there wasn't anything really at stake. No one was going to fire her. Maybe someone would hire her. I don't know. But, you know, she felt like she had a safe environment to learn that skill. And I so appreciated um, getting to hear Pat Leach and her uh, experiences, her um, tips, because... Public speaking isn't just about, you know, our, our official things. It's about the unofficial things, being prepared all the time. And um, in the end, um, I just really enjoyed getting to work with the pieces, and I, walked, I learned something from everything that we did. I can use something from everything that we did. We, we did not ask them in, in advance what they were going to say about attending, so. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us, no, Pat's, Pat's direction to be prepared, you couldn't be prepared because they wouldn't give you anything to be prepared. But, you know, I'll roll with it. Okay. Okay, actually, keep it for yourself now, not just yet, though. Um, okay, great, thank you. Um, next, alphabetically, would be Angela, who's on the line with us. Um, Angela, you should be unmuted. Hello, yes. There you are. Um, Hi. Introduce yourself. Got a, talk about got a second one. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes. I've got a second one. Angie said that the video was turned out to be the most fun part. When I looked at the um, blocks of time we had to work on the three projects, the video, the screencast, and the presentation all together, the number of hours that were actually allotted that weren't allocated to other things. I, I didn't think we could do it, but um, every group managed to, to pull something together and for, for all three of those projects. Um, and as intimidated as I was at the beginning because of the time constraints, um, the video turned out to be just tremendously fun. I, um, as it happens, the, the actual idea generation, the brainstorming, and, and um, 
screenwriting, you know, uh, script writing are the are the hardest parts. The actual video production and editing was turned out to be much easier than I ever imagined they could be. So that was that was really good. Um, the screencast. I wasn't necessarily as pleased with how our screencast came out because it was too short and we didn't have much of a conclusion, but within, you know, within the time constraints. But I think about it this way, the actual learning objective of the, of the exercise was to learn how to do a screencast, and now I feel like I could do that. If I, any, anything I need to do for, for work or any other purpose where I need to generate a screencast, I feel very confident that I could produce something good from that. So the learning objectives were, were definitely met. Um, and Michael Sauer's tech blasts I thought were, were perfect. Um, very, very densely packed information in those half hours. I don't think he wasted a single word. <laughs> learned so much from all of them. I took, took lots of notes. They're just really excellent and informative sessions. And I'll probably be re referring back to his PowerPoints to, to refresh my memory on some of them. But the, the whole experience, every, every part of it, I don't think a single minute of the entire whatever it was, 48 hours we were, we were at Doan College, I don't think a single minute of that was wasted. It was just absolutely fantastic. And I think the best part was getting to know my teammates on, for, for my project and for you know, the people that weren't, weren't necessarily my teammates, but everybody I got to interact with. Just learned something from everybody, all kinds of exciting things, not just about libraries and technology, but any topic that came up turned out to be highly useful and informative. Um, I feel like I'm blathering. <laughs> oh, well, that's right, Angela. Can you um, like introduce yourself a little bit and just say you know where you're from and how you got into the scholarship program? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. I should have started with that, and I'm just <laughs> scatterbrained. Um, I'm Angela Krager. I am a cataloger at the Chris Library at at UNO. I've been there, um, been here 17 years, and finally decided I needed to get the the master's degree so I could advance my career. So. Um, I am one of the very fortunate scholarship recipients, and so I'm very grateful to NLC for that. And that's how I got interested in the, the, the Tech Rodeo, was the email from Catherine Brockmeyer to all the scholarship recipients saying, hey, we're doing this thing. Why don't you join us? I thought, that sounds like a fantastic event. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Angela. Yeah. And next up, we have here in the room with us, Annette. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Annette Party. I am um, a scholarship recipient as well in the master's program at the University of Nebraska Omaha. And well, I'm really um, Mizzou students that takes classes at UNO. So there's a, several of us Nemos that uh, are familiar with that situation. Um, I found about out about the Tech Rodeo because of the email from Catherine. It was one of the first ones after I got the scholarship, and I kind of jumped on the opportunity because I thought it would be a fun way to learn some new technology, and I appreciated. Um, the effort from the Nebraska Library Commission to make it all free or open source technology that we were using because there are so many great programs out there that cost and cost a lot and they can do some wonderful things there's no doubt about it but very rarely do a lot of us have the budgets to be able to um, to actually use that and so I appreciated the avail availability of the programs and that all of us can continue to use them there aren't free trials or anything these were all programs we can use years from now hopefully that they're still going so yeah give them support um, I I think in addition to that some of the the, the tech blasts and as several people mentioned I, those were incredibly helpful and it was fun actually getting to touch the uh, interior components of a computer uh, yeah. something that I've always wanted to do but will not take my computer apart to do it because <laughs> okay. I like my computer as it is um, and then uh, also the the, uh, the team dynamics were were so much fun um, and several of the group members that I was on, I was on team curation. We talked about that we hadn't laughed this much in a professional setting in that either, a lot of us was ever, like we couldn't remember the last time that we had this much fun and still got the task done. It wasn't, we, you know, we still enjoyed ourselves but still did what we were supposed to and I think that was also one of the best ways to do it because we all were very happy with what turned out but also we enjoyed it, had fun with it, and so it wasn't, it, it had a different level of pride and appreciation
for the task that I think we wouldn't have had if we would have been strict and serious the whole time. Um, our video that we did had a, I thought, a wonderfully written script by one of our group members and very serious information and the entire video that was very hilarious it's, or very yes. funny. And so that was the idea is doing the straight straight man idea with the uh, the comedy on top of it. Um, so I think it was it was fun to to have that dynamic. Um, and I, I think also one of the favorite ones was the security tech blast, because I know that's one I took home right away and started changing passwords. Um, I mean, all kinds of things. And it wasn't because I was overly paranoid, but I now had a better way to do it that I could actually remember all of them. And I think that was, uh, and it was also very poignant because I had just listened to the NPR uh, interview with some of the Black Cat members from the Las Vegas uh, Hacker Conference. So it seemed to be very um, timely and interesting. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Thank you, okay. Annette. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, I think that what you said about the having fun with it, that's something that we kind of go into. In, um, it's hard to learn a lot of this technology, but play and experimentation is a way to do it. Um, our Nebraska Learns 2.0 program that we have the Library Commission here, where we do a, a new lesson, a new thing every month, is all about play, experiment, and just do it for fun, and then you'll learn something and find something that maybe you can use um, is that supposed to be a picture of me? Please <laughs> <laughs> show a picture of everyone else. <laughs> oh, next one. Yeah. No, the this, next is, this is a picture of you, Chris. Yeah. 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 There's Chris. So, I was talking about the fun part of the okay. humor, humor of the weekend. Oh, not that, that wasn't supposed to be <laughs> Um, actually, actually, I do want to bring, I, we want to move on to the next speaker, but this became the theme of the entire rodeo because Michael had brought up a phrase and then happened to be walking around on campus because he's a photographer and takes amazing photos um, and found this. But perhaps you want to give a quick context. I don't want to take no, away from our sure. other speakers. Yeah. Challenge yeah. Expect, Dur during the security talk, um, Richard Miller from here on campus, or from from uh, from the staff here, kind of asked me to maybe delve into the psychology of people who break into computers, which I, I was kind of hesitant to do. But one of the things I talked, one of my slides had a master lock on it, and I told him, I said, just to some people, criminal or not, you know, you see a lock, other people see a lock and say, challenge accepted. You know, it it is something to do. And then later that afternoon, I was walking around campus, and I saw this sign about the lake on campus and no swimming, and somebody had pasted, challenge accepted underneath it. And I, I don't think I could have planned that if I tried. So I literally worked that into my next presentation <laughs> just for Richard saying, you know, that in, in some cases, and, and even tying it back to troubleshooting. In fact, it, I think it was the troubleshooting mm -hmm. tech blast that I did next was, Sometimes you just have to look at it as challenge accepted and go for it. And, and that's why some of us do references, because it is that challenge. It's not the same every day. Um, once you get past the where's the bathroom question, you know, it, it becomes a challenge. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That was just, <laughs> that, that just kind of fell into place during the event. Okay. Yes, um, one of the people online is one of our... Um, Watch our attendees watching says, yes, criminals have brains. I'm just underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and our last speaker we have as attendee is on the line with us, Sky. Um, you should be unmuted, Sky. Can you say hello? Hello. There you go. All right, go Are ahead. Are there? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Sky. Um, my name is Sky Siri. Do we have a photo of you? Did you see a photo of you in the yeah. gallery? Yes, I didn't. I haven't tagged it yet. Um, I'm with Tina Walker. We, we're holding our sign upside down. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. You know, we survived barely. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. It. There, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> in the band with the yes. you're the the bandit. Blue bandana. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Um, again, I'm Sky Siri. I'm from North Platte Community College. I'm also a um, scholarship student and working on my associate's degree through um, Central Community College. So it's been an incredible opportunity, not only for the scholarship, but for the training opportunities um, as well, because it's like 
it's a whole other world out there that I don't think people realize. Um, and this, the Tech Rodeo was really, really incredible. And now that I've had a couple of days to process everything, because I'm one of those people I have to go home and then really think about it. <laughs> um, and it made me step outside of my box a little bit. And so that was really good. Um, and I know I need to do that more often because I'm really comfortable here at the college with the students and the faculty, but maybe not in front of like a big group of librarians. And so I'm getting there. And um, the Tech Rodeo, you know, provided all of the information regarding the Tech Blasts, and it was fun using the software. Lots of fun. Can you talk about your project, your content, for just a moment? What was yep, I was on um, the same team as Annette, and we were team curation. So um, <laughs> Mary, who came up with the script, was amazing because it was, she had that insight and she could see, and I think all of us just made it come to life. And we laughed, we, you know, it was just, and curation I thought was a difficult subject maybe because there's so many different aspects of it and we could have gone so many ways but I'm really pleased with our end product and um, you know as it turns out it's not just a curation isn't just cut and dry it's it's huge did you have questions you're really going for the speakers or right um, or okay um, one of the parts of my job on this, on this grant is um, to show to IMLS and the world, <laughs> <laughs> to prove to the world that uh, IMLS's funding was well spent. And uh, my running theme throughout the entire, uh, the entire event, the t entire tech rodeos, I would stand up and say, okay, um, in the next couple hours, we're going to throw a ton of information at you. And I understood that um, it was exhausting. There was information overload, sensory overload, a whole bunch of overload. But I was asking everyone to kind of keep in mind three things that they would take away with them. Um, and so that was uh, part of my task for them over the, the period of time. The other thing that we did ask on the evaluation was that if something had incubated for them, is that the right word perhaps? Um, something that had started to roll around in their head or perhaps they came to this rodeo with something, a project in mind. Um, and if there was any part of this um, event that they thought there might be a project in, and perhaps they've already thought of a screencast or they thought of a promotional video or something to that. And so I don't know, I don't want to put anyone in the hot seat among the five speaking today, mm -hmm. but if there are any of you who had a, a small kernel of an idea that you would possibly like to pursue in the next two months or in the next year if they wanted to to share that. The sky is still unmuted if you have anything to answer. Um, let me, I, the one thing I want to take away is I love the public speaking aspect of it and so I want to improve. I want to get better. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, good. Um, and yeah, for the people that are here in the room they can speak um, if Jessica, or um, if Jessica, if you have anything you want to add, or Angela, you can just type in the check. Well, chat actually, box I just unmuted them. both of you guys. So all three of you on the line, Sky, mm -hmm. Jessica, and Angela, you're all unmuted. So feel free to um, speak whenever you like. But it looks like Annette wants to say something. First. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the one thing I'm excited to take away was the the screencast um, using that and coming up with something. And really, <laughs> if you have a webcam built into your laptop how easy it really is to use. And I had used Camtasia in a practicum before, and that's fantastic, but that's kind of expensive software. It's not horrible, but it's for somebody who would only do it a few times a year, it's probably, you know, for me, it wasn't worth getting the whole package. But I'm excited that I'll be able to use this, the Screencast-O-Matic, the free software, and because um, there's some, some things that I'd like to put up for the job I work with and work with History Day students and how to have them navigate our website research, where to find things, um, and how to register for things that have been confusing in the past trying to type it out. And I wanted to be able to show people. Sorry, the one thing I wanted to say about screen screencast-o-matic 
is that it, it shows your screen, but it shows the motions that you're doing on your computer. Mm. And at the same time, you can, am I, did I learn something, Michael? Is yes, that exactly yeah. what you're doing? <laughs> I like it, yeah. And then you can also use a video cam camera that will give you a little box in the corner if you want to use it. But what it does is it captures what you're doing on your computer live. So you can do tutorials or you can give a tour um, and that sort of thing. And so that's, that's what's really nice about screencasting is it shows what it shows the motions that you're going through and that's part of the learning process for the person and who is who is viewing it. Yay, I learned what exactly. <laughs> okay. So Catherine gets her three things. The three big things I took away from this were the public speaking. I think people think of public speaking always as um, just I have to get up in front of a group, I'm going to present to a board. But I think Pat did a really good job of demonstrating how even when you're out, she said when you're out, you're always a librarian. You always are in your role. And to be prepared for the questions, I won't bring up the questions she was talking about. <laughs> here, but I think everybody here knows what they were. But that you need to be prepared. And as professionals, um, to understand that, I, I thought that was very important. The second part was security. And you know, uh, Michael did a great job of relating it when we think of our home and our own personal use, which that helps you to understand what you're doing. But those same things work in your office environment, in your library environment, wherever you are, there's something for you to understand. And uh, they're hugely important in today's day and age um, when we're working. And then the third thing uh, was a screencast. There are so many tools out there that uh, we never come into contact with. And they may be just the very thing that you need. And I have two projects in the line already set up for that. I can think of a lot of things at our public library that would just be easy for people that don't have technical experience to have a nice, personable way to have a um, thing for them to click and to be able to get the instructions that they need. And it's simple. It took five minutes. Uh, very easy to use. Um, the second piece for schools is I have been tasked with improving students being able to use research tools that are out there. And I could make a bulletin board or a flyer or a poster or a million different things, but the screencast, I think, would be an excellent tool for that um, to be used in the classroom or just when they come into the research station that we're planning to set up uh, because there is so much out there. Um, and that's our job is we're... I look at um, librarians, media, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it, to me it's a different form of information management. And um, I've been in information management for a long time and I'm so excited about what the Nebraska Library Commission has brought to us and the opportunities that we got this weekend and to come. So I hope you take advantage of them. Um, I, I hear one thing that I would like to reflect upon that Angie just said. Um, and um, that is that she talked about learning personally about security and passwords. That's a 21st century skill mm -hmm. that then perhaps if you have students that you want to talk with them about safety on the internet or you have mm -hmm. patrons that have never set up, a, a, set up a, an email account before, you can say here are some guidelines to, to choosing the perfect password for you. Um, so it's something that you use personally and something that you could apply to your work passwords, but it's also a skill that you can now transfer to another human being, whether it is a coworker for their own personal use or to your students or your customers for their own personal use. And so you hit the nail on the head. You gained a 21st century skill personally that has, um, that has um, enabled you then to share that personal skill with another individual. So that's exactly what that's exactly what we were hoping to do. <laughs> you just need to take this and send it to IMLS and that's your report. <laughs> I'll, be done with it. I'll just I'll just send you to Washington. How does that work? <laughs> it gets better every day. <laughs> this is Laura. We I have to say we we've been thrilled with how this turned out. Um, we these were not paid announcements. <laughs> um, and so we really were pleased with how this turned out because, you know, when you try something new, you're never quite sure how it's going to turn out. Um, and so now we have been talking about how do we keep this ball rolling. Um, 
what things can we do? What have this shown us that we need to take further? So we would love to hear from people if there are things that you would like to hear more about, things you've heard about today that you'd like to know more about. Um, if there are other kinds of programs, this program was grant funded and we do think it was worthwhile, but we might not, we don't know if we are going to be able to replicate it because we don't know if we, we can get funds for it. But there might be other ways to do similar things. So if you have some good ideas, we'd love to hear about them. We hope that we can extend this and um, bring some of the, the knowledge and the, the atmosphere that we had there to people. And, um, you know, and thank you to everybody. We do have um, one question on here, and I also want to see if Angela or Jessica have anything to say. But, um, Question on that someone typed in my attendees. Will we have access to the Tech Blast presentations? And I think Michael, yeah, you have the mouse. Uh, you can switch over. Right, right here. It's, uh, they are on the Tech website. Yeah. Yep. Um, now it's not necessarily recording them, but it's just the PowerPoint. Yeah, it is the okay. PowerPoint, but and, and I'll, I'll get that one fixed um, <laughs> later today. But nice. um, somebody please remind me. Uh, the slides are mostly self-explanatory. Um, there are, like the security one, we, it, it's a shorter version of uh, the talk that uh, Blake Carver did on Encompass Live a few uh, weeks ago. So there are other, if my slides aren't enough, then we, we've got other resources on, on the commission website net where you can where you can pick that stuff up. So. Okay, great. And Jessica or Angela, you're both on the line still. Do you have anything to answer, any answers to what Catherine had with your questions? Um, I'd be happy to share kind of my big three as well. Um, at the beginning, I, I told you the, uh, this is Jessica, by the way, <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, the, the biggest takeaway for me was the, you know, troubleshooting computer problems. But the other two things that I think that were really, really helpful were Michael's tips on passwords and how to customize them so that they're all different, but you can still remember them all, because that's always been a challenge for me that, well, but if I make them all different, I'm never going to remember them all, and he kind of gave us a trick to make that work in our daily lives, and, and again, something you can transfer from your daily life into your work life. And, and the other most helpful thing was Pat Leach's um, talk on public speaking because we are called on so often to speak up and advocate for our libraries. And I think a lot of us don't spend a lot of time working on our public speaking and trying to make that better. And she really made it clear, gave us some great tips and some great things to get started on, but really showed us that that's a skill that we need to continually work on, just like all of our other skills. And um, an idea that we came up with uh, the other regional uh, system directors, I believe it was Sharon Osenga from the Meridian Library System, she was really inspired by the Oral Histories Project and how they kind of took just an oral history, a very quick one of the librarians in their group, but that was really some of their stories in very short amounts of time were very moving and very interesting and it really demonstrated how we all, you know, we all have stories to tell but in a very quick way how they documented those, and that could be done in a thousand different ways in a thousand different communities. But that was one that we were really excited about, you know, maybe uh, starting a project like that in our own regional areas where we could maybe document some of our librarians in our areas. So that was a very inspiring project for us. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Angela? Were you just trying yeah, to say something? Uh, yeah, we have... I've already posted three things to Facebook, so I'm going to give a different three things that I took away. Um, one is just in in support of uh, Catherine's idea that you know this this is personal learning that can also be transferred to patrons. She was talking about that in, in the context of just one piece of learning, but I think it actually, actually just about all of these things. I mean, you never know when a patron's going to come to the library and say, "I need to make a video for work and I don't know how." Well, now I can actually help them fairly effectively. Um, all of these projects we did can can be transferred to the library users who come in, and that's one of the the best things that every single piece of this is valuable not only on the personal level but also on the helping people level. Um, I can imagine uh, using the screencast the screencast o um, We're in the process of changing ILSs uh, at our library, and so I can actually imagine using that in the not too far future, possibly to make staff training videos. Um, so that's 
got some very practical and, and possibly immediate applications. And my, my third takeaway, which um, was just a, a kind of a side discussion, but we were talking about at, at the rodeo about technology failures and how, you know, use your technology, but don't always trust it. Always have a backup plan because every piece of technology has a failure point. You know, the internet goes down or this happens or, you know, power outages. And, um, and so a lot of that was, was um, the idea of making backup plans and how to cope with technology failures more smoothly is also a, a very useful skill. During, during the middle of this webinar, um, I had a power bump and lost my connection. And uh, instead of freaking out, I just very quickly rolled back in much more quickly than I would normally have recovered from a technology failure. So it's given me more confidence in um, recovering from, from uh, glitches and things. So thank you to everybody who was involved in, in uh, putting on the Tech Rodeo. Everybody, all, everybody on NLC staff who, who worked on this did such a fantastic job. And, uh, oh yeah, we got to give props to Laura and Michael um, because I, you know I'm sure everybody can only imagine um, that the blood, sweat, and tears that, <laughs> that went into this, and then there also were tears, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were and then few. in terms and actually, of there was blood. Somebody yeah. else got hurt, but anyways. <laughs> but in terms of um, working together for us as a team, you know, we were trying to say, okay, everybody else, you got to figure out how to work on a te as a team. But we had to figure out how to work as a team, and we used that as an example during the sessions. Um, um, so they um, married beautifully a few of the objectives of the grant um, and then came up with some amazing other uh, ideas and uh, molded it into this fantastic retreat. I, I'm always about, you know, kind of adding the, the sappiness of it. But there, at the end of all of these um, demonstrations, there are actually some tears. I mean, I think that some people were laughing so hard they cried. <laughs> and maybe that was the majority of it. But it was also kind of like going away to camp where you meet some amazing people and you may have had a transformational experience. Um, and that uh, that it was amazing enough for you that you feel invigorated, inspired to go back to um, your daily life and that you feel like you have 41 other people who are standing behind you to feel courageous enough to try something. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think a lot of people, we gave out belt buckles <laughs> to everyone since it was a rodeo theme and they were nice and big, big belt buckles. But um, I think that was important to close with um, a sense of achievement. And again, um, props to Laura and Michael, props to Deborah, Richard, Mary Jo, Diane um, for uh, really pulling, pulling this thing off. It was quite the amazing experience. We won't be able to replicate it because no two tech rodeos would be the same anyway. Um, but there is a hope that even if we can take parts of this, and I will um, plug the End Compass Live because um, Chris is constantly looking for ideas for uh, presentations and um, um, if anybody wanted to, um, what they learned, if they wanted to come on and say, here's how I learned how to use a screencast. And, and give their own demonstration or anything like that, or you can think of an expert in the field that you might uh, know personally that they could present for Encompass Live. That's definitely a, definitely something that Chris is always looking for. More work absolutely, for you, Krista. Yeah. No, no, this is my job. No, absolutely, yeah. If you have learned something here that you want to share, you do all these ideas you guys have had, and you can go back and you actually do the, the project or whatever, and then want to share it with your colleagues, Call me. We can put you on the show. It's only an hour long, and you can just talk about what you did and how you did it. Um, you all talked a lot. We talked about practicing your public public speaking. This is a great way to practice that. You're speaking, but there's not a bunch of people staring at you. If that's your fear, <laughs> you can you can practice your speaking and your presenting without the audience looking at you first, and then move on to that. You know. Do the same thing at conference next year, and then you've got your audience. You know, it's a work, way to work up to it. But we want to share what our librarians are doing with the world. And like I said, there are people on the line right now, just so you guys all know, who are not from Nebraska. We've got out of from all over the country that come and watch these. So you'll be sharing out with um, librarians everywhere. But you can't hire any of our scholarship students <laughs> because no. they have to stay in Nebraska to work. That's yeah. part of the stipulation. The other stipulation. Don't our, our, our people. The, the other stipulation was that we ask that our scholarship students disseminate what they learn. Um, and part of it was for them to practice um, writing up what they learned or speaking about what they learned. Um, but also that's what, something we wrote into the grant is that um, we need to disseminate and um, spread the love. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say a few more things that, that I thought of as everybody else was talking. Um, I, I, want to say, I, I was describing these projects to my wife and I was like, this was guerrilla filmmaking. I mean, it really was. Um, at, at, 
Yeah, yeah. At, at one point, you watch one of the videos, and then you watch a later one. And in the later one, in in behind what they're filming is the is another team filming <laughs> their video. Um, so you know, it's, it, that's the crunch time. You know, that, that they were the, the filming was almost overlapping in some cases. Um, Two, I want to say special thanks to the directors of the, the local public library, which is yes. where that first one was mostly filmed. They went yes. off campus and into town at the public library. Um, several of the videos were filmed at uh, the Dome College Library, and, yeah. and their director was basically giving them run the, the run of the library from the looks of it to be able to film what they wanted to film. And, she did interviews and, as well. and, and she <laughs> actually participated in, in some of them. So I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's the summer, too. I think she was looking for a little excitement to happen <laughs> in her library. Because uh, college, college libraries in the summer are kind of quiet. Um, and the, the one thing I learned, this is, this is the one thing I got, and I got it from Pat Leach. She was, she was sharing an anecdote about a, a family member of hers saying to her once that, um, what was it, dumber people than you have done this well. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, some of the things I do, if I, I'm now just going to remind myself when something's really hard that probably dumber people than me have done this well. So that means I probably can too. <laughs> and and I, I think that's, that's it's, it's, she wasn't sure how she thought it was a compliment, um, and, and I'm I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, you have to think about it, but uh, I I think I'm going to use that at least in my own head. Um, that uh, the next time I hit a project, that I'm not sure how the heck I'm going to pull it off. Know know that I can. It was nice to know that Michael was also fallible. <laughs> <laughs> he ran into a couple of snags too. Oh, yeah. So I mean, it's all it's a learning process oh, wow. for all of us. Um, we're all at different stages, but um, it was interesting actually to see his thought process. He ran into a snag, and we were able to witness his decision making and thought process of how he was going to overcome that little, you know, get over that wall or get around that wall, whatever. I can't remember during one of the sessions. He was like, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, and well, then he, yeah, he, I couldn't he, find something in Tech Atlas. Yes. Right. He couldn't <laughs> find something, and so you know, just to see that all of us are at different tech tech savvy. Um, um, stages and actually it was someone at the end in their evaluation said I'm becoming a tech geek so, so, oh, uh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. so, so people you know uh, you're spreading your wings you're um, jumping out of your comfort zone but um, this weekend was all about having the opportunity in a safe environment yeah. to um, gain the confidence to um, move forward and jump into um, new waters so uh, that was half of it was just the practice of doing it and I see we have a director's cut posted oh, on Facebook. We do. Oh, cool. We're yeah. not going to play it now, but no. somebody has actually uh, posted a director's cut. Yeah. Go to the, um, we have included the, um, after we do, when do, we do a recording strand compass live, we include links to everything, and I've included the link already in our delicious mm -hmm. account to the um, Nebraska Librarians Learning Together Facebook page. So go there and watch the video, the yeah, director's and, cut. And that is the team who I kind of forced them to cut it down to five minutes, so <laughs> they did actually put out a director's cut. Awesome. <laughs> I want <laughs> yeah. Well, it will. Yeah. It will so, anyway. Okay. Okay, great. Um, let me see the microphone, and, and then I'm going to move the mouse to do the wrap up here. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for attending. When we, As I said, we had people from, they told me online, from Texas and from Arkansas were on watching us today. Um, so, yes, thank you, <laughs> everyone, for attending. Um, and thank you to all of our speakers here, of course, Michael, Laura, and Catherine. But then um, on the line, Jessica, Angela, and Skye, thank you very much for being here and joining us remotely. And um, Angie and Annette for coming in to, to here today. Um, this is great. We got to learn a lot about what's going on at Tech Radio. Like I said, all of this information is up there. They've got their Tech Blast, the recordings of their videos, um, the resources they use, the things that they learned about. So take a look at them and um, play with them and learn about them yourself. Uh, so thank you, everyone, and um, that will wrap us up for today. And I hope you will join us here on Encompass Live next week when our topic will be Library Box, something you may not know what the heck it is. A mobile DIY library is the title. Um, Jason Griffey, who is at the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga, has come up with a library box, which is a small little 
thing in a book. He's going to explain it next week. Um, <laughs> a router, a flash drive, and a battery pack. You can have a little portable, um, self-contained library of digital resources, ebooks, whatever it is you want to be sharing. Um, and he will be with us next week online to demo and show us this library box of his so you can see what it's all about. So definitely sign up for next week's Encompass Live and join us then. And also we do have as well a Facebook page where you can follow anything that we're doing in Encompass Live. Um, here. That's what Krista really looks like. She's not a frog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not a frog. <laughs> She's a swan. <laughs> so if you're Facebook, you can follow us on there and see, um, be notified of every time we have a new session coming up or a recording is posted or anything um, has been scheduled. So um, follow us on Facebook as well. So thank you everyone for attending and I hope we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.